Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I cannot believe the year is up in just one week. So crazy how fast the time went by. But now that I've been taking off a little time at work, I've had a little bit of reflecting to do on all the purchases that I made this past year. And so I want to share with you guys my best purchases of the year as well as my luxury regrets. So I'm gonna start with my best purchases first, but before we do, hi, I'm Sammy G Shop. I make videos once or twice a week on luxury and fashion. I also recently started posting more on my TikTok, which is also at Sammy G Shop. So if you're more interested in like quick, fun videos or more about my lifestyle, please follow me there as well as my Instagram, which is Soman MK. Okay, let's jump right into the video. I think the number one thing, which is like my favorite purchase of the year has to be the Birkin. I mean, she appeared in the November favorites as well, but of course, like if I look at all the bags that I purchased this year, which were a good number of bags, I would say, this is obviously like the creme de la creme of bags. Like this could be the bag of my lifetime, you know? Everything about this bag is just so me, I feel like. I love the size, you can carry so much of it. This is the Birkin 30. I love the gold on gold. It's just like the most quintessential Hermes color, I think. Everybody who is an Hermes lover should have something gold in their collection because it's such a good representation of the brand, I think. And me personally, I think I've discovered this this year actually, is that I prefer top handle bags much more over any bag. I would say like the least favorite bag of mine is a crossbody bag and my most favorite is a top handle. I think it's because I like to dress up a little bit when I go out and I feel more comfortable carrying a nice bag top handle so it's not rubbing against any part of my clothing and I can wear it with anything whereas a crossbody or even a shoulder bag just gives a little bit more of a casual style. Not saying that this Birkin can't be casual. I carry this like to anything, the farmer's market, whatever. Like this bag is going places with me because I spent a pretty penny on it. So she's gonna go and do everything that I want. I need to bring her cost per wear down a little bit. But also in terms of investment, this is by far the biggest kind of investment piece that I have in my collection. I've only recently started like collecting bags since 2021. So I don't have too many like classic styles. For example, I don't have any of like the smaller medium Chanel flaps. I don't have like a Lady Dior. I don't have too many classic styles. So honestly for me, it was like a big jump going from like, ha ha ha, cute fun bag to Hermes Birkin but for me the way that I saw it was that I know that this is going to be a bag that I want in my lifetime and for me I'd rather just not buy as many bags and save that money to just buy one really nice bag because I don't live a lifestyle where I'm like constantly going out I'm constantly going to events or parties or whatever so I want to have a small curated collection of bags where each bag fills a really specific purpose and for me the Birkin is just it's everything it can be in any kind of bag for me and then in terms of pricing I mean this bag was expensive I think this bag was retailing for 11,600 when I bought it back in September and the price is only gonna go up. I think every year Hermes does like a three to seven or five to 10% increase on their quota bag specifically. So there was a pretty like non-significant jump in price even from last year and I do expect another jump to happen next year. But if you look at their other like non-quota bag styles, like for example, the Evelyn or something or the Picatin, like those don't nearly increase as much in price as they do for the quota bags. So whereas now like I could go and buy a medium or a small classic flap on the resale market brand new for under the retail price, you're not going to be able to ever do that for a Birkin. So it made a lot more sense to me like financially to get some of my dream quota bags a little bit earlier on in my life. And then, you know, anytime, after that I can go and spend time and you know take the time to think about what I want next from like Dior or Chanel or any of the other luxury fashion houses but honestly it felt like a little bit of a race against the clock for Hermes so that is why I decided to start my journey this year I was really happy that I did so and I mean my dream bag came out of it so I could not be happier next up on my best luxury purchases of this year it must be my Chanel mini flap it is so cute, so adorable. I am so lucky to have been able to receive this bag on my birthday this year. I have an amazing essay at Chanel and he was able to get this for me right around my birthday time. There was some drama around this bag, but everything was sorted out and now I have the perfect mini bag. I was for a while when I first started luxury shopping. I started at Louis Vuitton and then I kind of went over to Chanel and Dior and I spent a good chunk of my time loving luxury in Chanel I would say just also because I have such a great essay I love to just go shop hang out with him and you know gab and stuff like that but this mini flap is definitely my piece de resistance because I think that the value of the mini flap is still worth what you're getting the flap did increase for this year's price increase what around February I think but it didn't increase nearly as much as like the small and the medium flap did so I think before the increase it was around $4,300 and I think when I bought this it was around $4,900 pre-tax and then 
then that is actually the exact same price jump that happened at Dior for like the equivalent bag, which would be the small Dijoy. The Dijoy used to be 4300 and then it went to 4900 But in terms of like holding their value, Chanel still holds its value much more than Dior does. And I think that the flap line of Chanel is still a really classic line that any girl would want in their wardrobe. And I do think that I'll continue to add classic Chanel pieces. I think I'm done kind of adding the fun, trendy, seasonal ones for the time being. But in my eyes, definitely the mini flap was worth the value that I got for it. The mini is honestly just a little bit smaller than the small and the small is already retailing for close to $10,000 whereas this is just retailing under $5,000. Although the mini flap is a little difficult to get because it's a really popular color and size and a lot of girls want this, it's definitely not impossible. Like I just asked my essay and then he was able to reserve one for me essentially. So if you have a good relationship with your essay and you want one of these, definitely just ask for it, especially since I feel like Chanel popularity has gone down a little after all the price increases. It still gives you that really elegant, really classic vibe from Chanel. And so this is definitely my second favorite purchase of the year. My next best purchase of the year is to just round out the bags and it is my Go Yard St. Louis tote in the PM size. This is honestly such an easy grab and go bag. This can be a work bag, this can be like an errands bag, this can be honestly if you're a bougie like that a groceries bag. This can do so much because it's just so easy. The Gouillard monogram is so elegant and it's still definitely very low key in my opinion. A lot less loud than like the LV Neverfull for example. And the price point is still really good. I think this retails for around $1,300 or $1,400. I got it for less because I bought it in Korea tax free so I was really happy with the price that I paid. I think I got it for around $1,200 new. But yeah, especially as a dog mom, you know, <laughs> I'm always lugging things around like toys or wipes or poop bags or whatever. This I always bring with me. And even to work, it just fits my laptop, especially if you get a nice shaper for the base or even if you get an insert like that, it's a lot more easy for organization and for carrying heavy things. And Goyard is definitely a really cool kind of it girl brand, I feel like. So I really love this tote and this is definitely one of my best luxury purchases this year. Next up definitely has to be my Van Cleef neck Necklaces. I went a little crazy this year and I got three. So I was gifted the guilloche for my birthday this year. I got the rose gold sweet for myself for my birthday this year. And then I got the very classic gold white mother of pearl at the very beginning of this year. And I mean, I'm just in love with the Alhambra line. I feel like the sweet sizes are really great for just very casual everyday wear. And then my guilloche definitely comes out for any kind of a special occasion because it just is so radiant. If I had to pick a favorite of the three, I think that's really difficult. I would have to say my least favorite is the gold with the white mother of pearl because pearl is a little bit more of a sensitive stone the other two are pure gold i wear a little bit less and you have to be a little bit more careful with it so i think i wear a little bit less but in terms of like the amount of times i've worn something i think i have definitely worn my rose gold hammered necklace the most but in terms of just any special occasion the guilloche must come out and i think it's just an absolutely beautiful stunning piece if i had to only choose one i would probably go for the guilloche necklace just because i have a lot of other like small dainty necklaces that can kind of substitute for the van cleef but nothing really can rival the guilloche from van cleef in my opinion and i'm definitely looking to add another one in the white gold so fingers crossed that that happens soon but the craftsmanship from van cleef is just so beautiful and elegant i really don't think that van cleef will ever go out of style because their motif is just really really simple and classic it's not a trendy season it's just something that you can even pass down to your daughters and so my van cleef pieces are my favorite jewelry purchases this year and then lastly i did get a good amount of ready to wear as well as designer shoes this year but i would have to say my favorite out of all of them have to be my dior slingbacks these although they do have a stiletto heel like this are actually so comfortable and the slingback portion with its elasticity really hugs the heel of my foot and so my foot is super secure and i feel really really comfortable walking these for an extended period of time and I think that they're just so elegant they're also really classic I mean these shoes will never go out of style in my opinion I did end up getting them in the fabric instead of the leather or anything else because I felt like the fabric was definitely a the most durable probably and b it was a little bit more casual so I felt like I would be encouraged to wear the shoes a little bit more but I mean the silhouette is so elegant and the fact that they're actually comfortable blows me away and so this is definitely a really great purchase of this year next up are my least favorite purchases or my luxury regrets of the year and I think the number one thing would actually have to be my Cartier Love Bangle. So this I feel like I had just seen so much everywhere. I mean every girl on social media has this as part of their stack. I do think it's just a beautiful bangle but to be honest it's just really not right for my wrist size. I've talked about this briefly before. This is the smallest size in the 15 so I can't get it any smaller and while it looks like fine and okay 
I just hate the fact how much movement it has on my wrist and additionally it's really easy for kind of like that hinge part to press against my wrist. You can see there's a little bit of an indentation from that hinge and yeah, this just annoys me because I know that if I stack it against something else, they're always just going to kind of cross paths, mix and match. They're not going to stay in their position on the stack. And so for me, I just don't think it was the right purchase. I mean, you can see how like scratch free it is because I honestly never wear this. And this bangle is like $5,000. So to get something that's $5,000 and you rarely wear it is honestly the worst regret that I have. Cartier also doesn't resell very well. It doesn't really hold its value as soon as you wear it and it's no longer brand new because you can just, you know, easily get it at a boutique. And additionally, I find it a little bit funny that the smallest size bangle is the same price as the largest size bangle. The reason why the love bangle is so expensive is because it has so much gold in it. If I got like a 19 or like a 20 or something, that would be a lot more gold in that bracelet than my small, small, small 15. And so I feel like I'm losing money by getting the absolute smallest size possible because the weight of gold is so different from the largest size. So yes, definitely my biggest luxury regret of the year. Next up is a bag that I want to talk about and I actually cannot show it to you guys because I sold it because I disliked it that much essentially. It was definitely a really large luxury regret of the year and that is the Small Caro from Dior. I got it in a warm taupe color and I originally got it because I wanted like a small flat bag similar to my Chanel mini flap but I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get the mini flat from Chanel so I kind of just like settled on the Dior Caro because it had kind of a similar vibe to the mini flat from Chanel but honestly they're kind of different so in terms of sizing they're quite similar the flat portion of the Dior kind of goes all the way across the front of the bag it also has a turn lock that has like the CD logoing it also has a back pocket but what annoyed me the most is the chain on the Caro the chain is like this bright yellow in my opinion kind of ugly yellow and it's always on the exterior of the bag so in terms of the mini flap you can kind of like pull portions of the strap inside you can add like a chain shortener link to adjust the strap length but in terms of the caro you can't do that because the entirety of the strap is on the outside of the bag so you can only wear it crossbody and as a shoulder bag by kind of doubling up the chain and wearing it as a shoulder bag but what i learned while having that bag and using it for several months i would say is that i number one really disliked that color of gold number two the quality of that bag for some reason wasn't the greatest the metal of the strap actually looked like it had some kind of weird patterning almost like it like had sat in water and then the water droplets had caused water damage on it I have no idea what it was but we actually had to order a brand new strap from Paris and when that strap came it looked like the same so there was definitely some just kind of quality issue because some of the display bags didn't have it but mine and the new strap did and so that really bothered me from the get-go and then additionally I honestly hated the sound that the chain makes when you kind of like shift around or your it has it on a shoulder bag because it clings together because there's no leather within the metal portion of the strap it's just a lot of metal and then it has kind of like that part of leather that rests on your shoulder I just feel like it looks really harsh it's a little bit more of a casual bag than the Chanel mini but all in all it just was not the bag for me. The Dior Caro is definitely the most equivalent bag to the Chanel mini flap but if you're just looking for an alternative to the mini flap because it's getting hard to get I would just recommend getting the black small Dijon instead. That one is way cuter. The champagne gold really softens it and I think it's just a really versatile bag because you can wear it three ways. I would really 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 discourage people from getting the Caro. Of course everyone has their own opinions. Personally just for me it wasn't a bag that worked for me but if it's a bag that works for you I'm so happy for you. I hope you slay wearing that bag and then to wrap up the video is my last luxury regret of the year and it's actually kind of like a combination of things it's a lot of designer shoes that I actually bought this year so this year I was kind of like going out of my comfort zone I was buying some more ready-to-wear I was buying more designer shoes which I'd never bought previous to this year and I think I either bought too many so I just ended up not wearing some or for some reason, I just didn't reach for them. And so, for example, I got some really nice Gian Vito Rossi shoes. I got Hermes shoes. And just, I have not been reaching for them because I just love going to my go-to shoes that are comfortable, they're broken in, and like I know that they're just going to serve me and I have a lot of neutral shoes already. So next year I'm going to kind of try to scale back or maybe just get some more kind of exceptional shoe pieces instead of just more kind of like normal shoes. But I will have to say that I am a little sad and regret getting honestly these beautiful Chanel ballet flats. I think they're so gorgeous and honestly at the time I was just so happy to get them because ballet flats from Chanel are really classic. This beige with black with CC detailing on the side is also just so classic. I think so many girls would love to have these shoes. 
You can see that I haven't worn them yet. And that's just because I don't really wear flats. I bought these thinking that I was going to convince myself to do so. But for me, I much just prefer like a low heel, like a block heel or something. And so I just never reached for these, honestly. I think it's also partially because my legs are a little bow-legged. So when I wear flats, that kind of bowness of my legs is a little bit more accentuated which I dislike and so when I wear heels it kind of straightens my legs up a little bit and makes them obviously look longer and everything so I just didn't reach for these and so obviously these were still an expensive pair of shoes I do think I will eventually wear them I just need like a good event to go and wear them to but in general I do regret like a number of designer shoes that I have purchased this year just because I haven't worn them and I do feel bad when I do get something expensive and I don't actively wear it because I do feel like that's just a waste of money and and someone else would appreciate it more than I do. But that brings us to a wrap on my best and worst luxury purchases of this year. I hope you enjoyed it and I would love to hear down in the comments what your guys' best and worst luxury purchases are because it might just make me feel a little better about mine. But thank you guys all so much for watching. I wish you and all of your families the most wonderful of holiday season and I will definitely see you in the new year. Bye guys!